Hello, good morning. My name is Emmanuel Izei, the lead decorator of iWorld Painting. Now, this is one of my projects here in Katampe Extension, where I will be taking you through the practical sequence on how to handle a number of defects in one. You understand? The, the number of defects I'm talking about when you're having flaking, when you're having a moisture issue affecting your screening uh, filler or your smear screening or your top coat you understand now if you are having capillary rise issue this same process is the process that you're going to go through now first of all the first thing that we did here is to grind off the skinned material that was applied on this substrate we had to go back to the bare surface now when you do that because that's the most important aspect of any treatment sequence to be followed do you understand now when you have achieved a full grinding surface the next uh, step that you're going to take is your bonding phase now you can use either your bonding liquid or your sterilizing solution which is also your stabilizing solution now when you grind a particular surface you know definitely that surface becomes freeable and when the surface is freeable it becomes very porous porous in the sense that there can be water ingress on this surface that can affect the other side or the other the outer the back partition of this uh building which can possibly cause flaking of the painted surface now you have to avoid uh first of all the freeability of the surface and make it uh, prevent it from being porous now the first step is for you to stabilize with your what your stabilizing solution or a bonding liquid now when you stabilize this surface when it's fully cured for you to know that okay you've done a particular job that is very okay for you as an artisan and for your client you come you use an abrasion of your hand to see if there's going to be any uh sand going off the plaster so if there's no sand or there's no dust it means that you've properly bonded the surface do you understand now when the bony phase is fully cured you come into the next phase which is you have to check for the alkalinity of the wall what is the alkaline rate of this wall? You have to check it. That, that brings you to your alkaline resistant primer because definitely an alkaline resistant primer will help you detect a number of rules on this your software. First of all, it will check if there is any trap moist on a particular plaster that can probably bleed the alkaline primer. Now, when you have issues like that, you have to call the attention of your architect or your engineer to hack off that plaster and we plaster it you understand that's the first phase secondly it will tell you if the if this surface can bleed any subsequent top coat that you are going to use so if you apply your alkaline and the alkaline bleeds it means that that plaster can bleed your smith screenings also it can bleed your your putty it can bleed your top coat so because we know that alkaline is a steam blocker so for any moisture to bleed alkaline, it means it is severe. So before you skin, you must use an alkaline. So if your alkaline bleeds, either, either when you are working on capillary rise issue, if your alkaline bleeds, you know that that plaster is having an issue of bleeding. Probably there is a rust of iron on that spot or that plaster is completely damaged. So you have to hack it off. You have to completely hack that plaster go back to the main block work and do your plastering before you start your treatment this uh practical is very important very very important now when you do your alkaline let me show you where we've applied an alkaline now this is a word that is primed with alkaline like this is dulos alkaline resistant primer now if there's any defect on this plaster the alkaline will help me reveal it it will show it out that this plaster is not suitable for for skinning it's not suitable for painting do you understand so since there is no stain as you can see there is no bleeding on this surface the alkaline is still going through the curing process so you have to allow it dry for 48 hours you understand depending on the weather condition most times we leave it for eight hours but i prefer 24 48 hours you understand so for me to check if there's going to be any subsequent bleeding on this surface so if there's no bleeding on this surface which means i've passed 
the second step which is the pioneer of alkaline you must know also that alkaline is 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 also a bonding liquid you understand alkaline art are also as a bonding what liquid now if you pour very well you see the, the firmness of the plaster is around 70 percent at this point do you understand so when you achieve this the next phase will come in now because we need to skim we bring we know that okay we want to work on possible moisture moisture issue we want to work on possible uh pipe leakage that can occur so we need to assume beyond the box that okay what of if there is pipe leakage what of if there is water ingress from bedroom you understand so those things we need to calculate everything now when we are done with this alkaline phase because we want to treat for moisture we will not bring in a moisture sealant a damp sealant that is very good you understand that has the ability to expand and contrast you understand that crack that damp sealant must be able to penetrate in and seal up those cracks you understand you alkaline is not a damp sealant you must know that it is never what a damp sealant it is a regulator of your plaster to know if your plaster is suitable for skimming suitable for what painting and to help you reduce the alkalinity of this wall you understand because alkaline the, the average is zero to seven once it is beyond seven the alkalinity of this wall is high then it can bleed any soft any top coat that comes on it do you understand now we're going to apply a damp sealant the damp sealant i'm going to use is uh bitumen i'm going to use bitumen or either uh fibrous aquacet because it has uh fiber embedded in it so you understand so it can help the the strength of the plaster expand and also contrast so when we are when we're going to do the the this the damp uh step I'm going to show you also how you can apply it now most people because you are not treating for damp most people can go directly like this especially when you are using a high quality ready to use putty do you understand to achieve a good result you can skim like this if you are not having a moisture issue if you are not having a capillary rise issue you can skim directly like this do you understand but if you are taking into consideration um moisture issue you have to bring in a damp sealant on top of your alkaline so this alkaline will give your sealant a good adhesion you understand so that your, your sealant can dry properly penetrate properly before you bring in what your skin this is a very vital cause that i'm giving out because it is important and it is one of the major issues we are facing in the industry as painters and not only painters as professional painters to understand so do well to to ask relevant questions do your research before you engage in uh, treating a particular uh, defect of any kind now my name remains Emmanuel Izei the lead decorator of Highward Painting I will be open to receive your questions of any defect you are going through. Thank you because I know I'm going to see you next time.